So it's Sunday, and that means back by popular demand, another installment in the OTRS Central Triple Threat video series. Yeehaw! And this week, I think I've got some good topics, all WWE related, but I don't think that's a bad thing in this particular case, because to me, they're all, again, interesting topics. This week, I'm going to talk about the Daniel Bryan release rumors that have come out over the past week or two. Uh, some of the names that I'd like to see in the 2016 WWE Hall of Fame class. And then a personal appeal for Hulk Hogan to be at WrestleMania 32. So, let's get started with Daniel Bryan. And for all of you that love him, yes, yes, yes! So there have been some recent reports and buzz on the internet about the potential for WWE to release Daniel Bryan apparently as soon as this upcoming Monday. And I believe this all goes back to a website, don't know what it's called, don't frankly give two fucks. But the same website that apparently was on the story about John Cena taking time off this fall to do some work on a show with WWE. And now you've got these rumors, so people feel that the source has some credibility. And I'll look at this, and I sit there and say, from a WWE standpoint, and looking at the WWE from the outside, regardless of what happened to the guy, regardless of whether or not he can ever work another match again or not, or whether you want to medically clear him or not, or if part of the reason you want to keep him off of television in an in-ring capacity is because you don't want the fans to gravitate to so much towards him that it takes away from what you're actually trying to get done, what you want to do. Uh, the bottom line is, is you've had him still this whole time under contract. Why not use him on commentary as some type of mentor or manager for somebody like a Neville? You know, do some type of thing like that. Utilize him in some type of authority figure role, maybe as a general manager. Yeah, you've done that with a lot of people. Well, you could do it with Daniel Bryan. It would work. It wouldn't be any worse than what you've already got. I mean, you had Kane freaking be the director of operations for how damn long? You know, maybe make him an NXT trainer. I don't know. I just don't understand. You've had this guy under contract. Yes, you're not medically clearing him to wrestle, and maybe he'll never get medically cleared by your company to wrestle again. But as long as you've been paying him, why not use him for something? Why not find a way to get something out of him? Because at the end of the day, there's still some money to be made with Daniel Bryan. If no, for no other reason than if you continue to put him on television in some type of role, it gives you an excuse to sell more merch, and the man can move some merch. And for a company that is so focused on moving merch and selling merch, why would you take away a guy who could help you move a lot of merch? And for a guy as well that you've invested so much into over the past several years, why would you put all that investment into a guy just to stop the potential of getting any type of returns on that investment going forward? It just makes no sense to me. To me, releasing Daniel Bryan would be a stubborn, petty move by the WWE. It would be a damn shame. Look, I'm no Daniel Bryan fanboy. You're not going to see me creaming myself over him. But I'm also somebody who looks at it from a business standpoint, and a lot of you know that. And I always say, if I feel you have a way to do something with somebody that can help your product somehow and make some money some way, then that's the way you need to go, and that's what you need to do. And Daniel Bryan is a guy that can still make your company some money in some way. Far more money back than you would pay him in a contract. So to me, if the WWE decided to release him, and I don't know if I believe the rumors to be true, and I don't believe, at least at this moment, that this is actually going to happen, mind you, but just the thought of it would scream to me that the WWE wants to fuck with people, and they want to fuck with Daniel Bryan, and they want to be stupid, and they want to sit there and prove a point that proves no point whatsoever, because the WWE, again, is that stupid. Now, with the announcement of Sting being the first member of the 2016 WWE Hall of Fame class, it's one of the things that ties into the road to WrestleMania, so I start to get excited about the potentials for the yearly Hall of Fame induction class. I mean, that's just the way it is. That's still the fan in me, and I'm not going to be ashamed of that. So now you've got Sting in there, and a legitimate main event or top flight guy to headline your class, even if he's never won a WWE match, what have you. But I was thinking, who else would I like to see 
be inducted this year? And I know a lot of you will ask this question, have asked this question over the past several months. Who do I think should go in? Who do I want to go in? So let me go ahead and answer that for you right now. I've got some names in mind. You know, one that I think of, they've just released a DVD about them. Maybe we're getting to the point where things can finally come to some type of a healthy closure for all parties involved. And there are many parties involved here. The Hart family, the WWE, wrestling fans, the wrestling community as a whole. You know, I think it'd be a great time to put Owen Hart in the WWE Hall of Fame. But every year would be a great year to do that. It would be nice to have that celebration of his life, his career, his legacy, you know, so on and what have you. But I think it would be a very therapeutic thing, frankly, for all parties involved. And I think this would be a good time to do it this year. Uh, for me, I know this year you're going to have WrestleMania in Dallas. So I personally would like to see some type of a, a twinge of WCCW World Class Championship Wrestling mixed into this Hall of Fame class. So I think of people like Rick Rude. Now, obviously, he's a popular name that we throw out there every year as a guy that's not in the Hall of Fame. You know, you look at Rick Rude, he should be in, frankly. And now here's a good opportunity, I think, this year to put him in. Because you don't have a ton of names just like screaming at you that they've got to go in this year. He's actually one of them. And I think the timing is right. For me, I could look at a guy like a King Kong Bundy and say it's time for him. I look at somebody like a Kamala and, you know, people have their little quips and they might say their things. But, you know, Kamala was a big deal for a number of years. And, you know, he made some money in this business. And at the end of the day, you know, he's had some rough times. He's in a bad place, you know, physically, financially. You know, it'd be kind of cool for him to be able to get that spotlight of the Hall of Fame. We can be a part of that experience, be able to get that payoff, and be able to maybe get some merch uh, sold that will help him, you know, in the tail end of his life. I'd be okay with that. Now, obviously, you're going to be in Dallas. You think about the Von Erichs, and you think about the Freebirds. And if there was ever a year that you were going to put the freaking fabulous Freebirds in the WWE Hall of Fame, this is it. You know, all the thoughts of the stars and bars and what you do with that, you figure that fucking shit out later. The bottom line is the fabulous Freebirds have to go in, in part because who's freaking left alive from me? Again, you can say whatever you want about Michael P.S. Hayes as a producer and a creative member, but as a guy and as a faction, the fabulous Freebirds were that business back in the 80s. They made a lot of money in a lot of different territories, and they are one of the single biggest omissions from the WWE Hall of Fame. For me, again, looking back on WCCW, I look at somebody like a manager, and I think of Gary Hart, a guy who was very influential on screen for many years, and even more influential behind the scenes, especially in WCCW as a booker. You know, I think when people talk about great managers in the history of the business, a guy that doesn't get talked about nearly enough is Gary Hart. You know, sadly, he's no longer with us, but it would be great to see him get that spotlight and get that recognition that I think he deserves that he doesn't get nearly enough of, including by the people that come on in the Internet and talk about wrestling that should be smarter about this stuff than it seems like they actually are. I look at somebody like a commentator like Bill Mercer, you know, a guy that was the voice of WCCW for many years. And he, believe it or not, is still alive. It'd be kind of cool to see Bill Mercer there at the WWE Hall of Fame ceremony in Dallas, Texas, at AT&T Stadium, you know, or wherever the hell they're going to have the ceremony the night before WrestleMania 32. That'd be cool to see. In terms of celebrities, you know, I guess you could throw out any names that you want to, somebody celebrity wing. I'll throw out because he's not in there, because he was a part of WrestleMania 1, and when you think of celebrities in this country, it doesn't get much bigger than Muhammad Ali even to this day. So that's just somebody that I'm thinking of. But again, looking at these names, to me this year, I personally would like to see a bit of an emphasis on the old WCCW. And I think there's a chance that you could throw some of those names out there. You got Sting, you got Owen Hart. If you had Rick Rude and you throw in the fabulous Freebirds, that's a pretty, pretty good Hall of Fame class. You know, and it stands right up with some of the other good ones that we've seen in recent years. You know, this last piece is a bit personal to me because Hulk Hogan, as I've talked about so many times in the past, is the reason I became a WWF fan, the reason I became a wrestling fan, the reason I stayed a fan for all these years. 
you know, to me, he will always be my favorite wrestler of all time, and that will never change because he's meant so much to me in my life as a professional wrestling fan. And I still think beyond question, he's the biggest star in the history of the professional wrestling business. And if we want to take anybody else, the only other guy I would throw into that mix, honestly, is Vincent K. McMahon. You can take your Austins, Rocks, Cena's, and Flares, and you could shove them down your throat, shove them up your ass. Because I ain't trying to hear it. But with that said, it broke my heart last year when Hogan, it came out, he said what he said. I don't care the context of how it was said or when it was said or how we found out about it. You know, it broke my heart because, again, what he was talking about, you know, there's a part of it, especially with some of the other shit involving him and his son, Nick, you know, when Nick wasn't trying to uh, kill friends in car accidents. Um, you know, it, it's, it's sad and it's heartbreaking because... You know, you, you see, like, out-of-touch white dad who's trying to be cool and hip, and he just comes across even more prejudiced and racist than he is, or maybe he is that. You know, but it was just heartbreaking because there are a lot of people that would have expected that out of, and he's not one of them. And we could sit there and talk, he could sit there and talk about being in a bad place until he's blue in the fucking face. That still doesn't make what he said okay. And it still doesn't make it right makes it stupid and it makes it ignorant and it made Hulk Hogan sound stupid and ignorant and there are many things you could call Hogan over the years two things I never would have thought we could have called Hogan were stupid and ignorant you know and it just I don't know but you know then you get the whole backlash WWE's taking them off of their website they're taking them out of the Hall of Fame listing they're not mentioning them on TV they're not selling any of his merch any of that crap and I'm just saying, oh, come fucking on. Overreaction and pussyism to the nth degree from a company that now has become a walking, talking, breathing vagina, the WWE. And what I don't really understand is how the WWE can justify this because it just reeks of hypocrisy. He didn't kill his girlfriend like Superfly Jimmy Snooker. It's not like this is news to the company. They knew about it three plus decades ago because, hell, Vince McMahon helped make that go away. And if you don't think that's what happened, you're fucking crazy. He didn't sit there and beat his wife like Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, and again, that's documented. We know that shit. You know, he didn't sit there and, um, you know, freaking do something like what um, Pat Patterson did, which was be in a position of power and harass people and exploit people for his own purposes and try to put people in uncomfortable situations to try and take advantage of them and fuck with their careers and livelihoods. Well, maybe Hogan said some of that, but he didn't do it in a sexual connotation necessarily. You know, it, it's over, over the years, you've got Abdullah the Butcher spreading hep C in the ring to all these different damn people, but all these guys are in the freaking WWE Hall of Fame. You know, Donald Trump who's been known to say racist and sexist shit and do racist and sexist shit for many, many years. He's in the WWE Hall of Fame, and the company's proud of him being in there. Mike Tyson, a convicted rapist. God love him, but he's a convicted rapist. And pretty much a proven woman beater, too. The WWE put him in the Hall of Fame, and they celebrate his ass to kingdom fucking come, too. So why are all of these people now with Snuka... Obviously, they've ostracized him, but they haven't stopped mentioning or ostracizing Donald Trump. They haven't done that. You know, Donald Trump's easily found on the website. He's all over the place. Same thing with Mike Tyson. Same thing with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Why is Hulk Hogan getting singled out here? And why is Hulk Hogan getting treated like he did so much worse than these guys? He's basically getting the Benoit fucking treatment from his WWE family. And it's not like Hogan went and killed fucking Linda and then killed Brooke or Nick or both and then himself. If he did that, then fuck him may rot in hell and the maggots eat out his goddamn eyeballs and crawl up through his fucking scrotum sack. He didn't do that. He said some ignorant, dumb, prejudicial, racist shit. But a lot of other fucking people do. And for all companies... I don't know why the fuck the WWE is sitting there pretending like they give a shit about racial equality. When the hell does that matter to the damn company? And even still, when you look at the Hall of Fame, they got Donald J. Trump standing loud and proud under the D's. Under the D's. D's for dicks. On the Hall of Fame page on their fucking website. 
All types of videos you can find on WWE.com featuring the fucking Donald. But we're going to single out Hulk Hogan. This is bullshit. And to me, I look at it, frankly, as a wrestling fan, you know, you see all these guys die all the time. I'm being honest, man. You know, this this past year, you know, guys like Roddy Roddy Piper and Dusty Rhodes and Nick Bockwinkel and, and many more. You never know when Hogan might kick the bucket. I'm not saying that to be morbid here, but I'm saying it because it's kind of fucking true. I don't want to see him kick the bucket with this kind of hanging out there. It's time for this shit to end. It's time for things to come full circle again. Because WWE is not Hulk Hogan involved. To me, anyways, doesn't feel the same. Hulk Hogan without the WWE involved doesn't. He doesn't feel the same to me either. It's just not right. The circle isn't complete. And I'm not saying he needs a big role. I'm not saying he needs a featured segment or anything like that. But I hope this company comes to their senses and they invite him back into the family for WrestleMania 32. That's what I really hope they do. It would mean a lot to me as a fan. I'm sure it would mean a lot to him. Frankly, I think it would mean something to the WWE too. Mean a lot to other fans as well. You know how long? How much longer are you going to punish the guy? And what are you really proving when the whole decision to do what you did just reeks of typical WWE corporate hypocrisy to begin with? Hopefully, everybody involved comes to their freaking senses. And I don't care what's out there with the Gawker trial coming up. I don't care. So how about WWE show some fucking courage and? demonstrate they still have some testicular fortitude and do the fucking right thing and bring Hulk Hogan back into the fold and let Hulk Hogan be there at WrestleMania 32 because mind you, WWE, need I remind you, without Hulk Hogan, there might not be a WrestleMania 32 because without a Hulk Hogan, there might not have been even a WrestleMania 2. So this week's Triple Threat video went a little bit longer than it usually does, but hopefully that's okay. It wasn't like a fucking hour-long snooze fest. I thought there were some interesting topics to talk about, and sometimes you just got to go with the flow. So let me know what you think. What do you think about the rumors of Daniel Bryan potentially being released? Not so much just that you think it might be hogwash or not, but how ridiculous it is more so to me that this company doesn't even fucking want to use the guy when he can still make some money for them in some type of capacity. Whether you really like him or not, he can make some money for that company in some way. He's a popular performer. Why would you not find somehow, some way to use him? You know, the 2016 WWE Hall of Fame class. Now that Sting's been announced. Who else would you like to see announced that I did mention or maybe that I didn't mention? And then in terms of Hulk Hogan, what do you think? Do you want Hulk Hogan to be back involved with the WWE in some way? Would you like to see him at WrestleMania 32? Would you not? Or do you not give a fuck? Let me know your thoughts on all this in the comment section below. I'll see you later.